This movie opened up the conversation to everyone and shit hits the fan or shtf for the preppers. The doomsday preppers, as much as I hated acronyms, I'd like to keep it to its original form and full of words. Shit hit the fan really makes sense. Where does shtf come from? The term has been around since at least 1930. shtf, shit hits the fan, has referred to problems that accumulate and grow, spread, ever since. But nobody talked about it in the movie. Let's talk about Prepper Danny, Kevin Bacon. It's Kevin Bacon! Merry Christmas! He's not a loser, he's great. We don't hate him at all. Some might call him a survivalist, may or may not come in handy for these families during such a critical time. Maybe all this means is a few of them themed up. Who is not racist but obviously a stereotypical, gun-toting southern ignorant racist American neighbor, a male Karen, who George thinks of as a friend. Why is that funny? As a doomsday prepper he doesn't want to help anyone, a complete opposite of the vast majority of real preppers as was mentioned in Prepper Now channel, even in the middle of societal free fall, especially in the middle of societal free fall, the way we talk to and about each other still matters. With Americans figuratively and literally at each other's throats, we will be wise to remember that. Amanda almost gets into altercations and was about to look for a manager. I think we need to look at the terms and conditions here. Uh, I'd like to speak to the manager. Where their past feelings of entitlement, usually an entitlement that is largely unacknowledged in their daily lives, may become apparent. They act out. I fucking hate people. There are millions of people in this country with whom we don't just vehemently disagree. These are people whose decisions cause us actual grief and plunge us and the people we love into danger. These are people whose attitudes can and do kill. When it comes to the way they treat war, picture Henry Kissinger, science, or race, or immigration, or healthcare. Yet we don't feel righteous when we condemn what they have done. We rather feel sad, and, at the end of the day, we want to believe that we may still learn to see each other differently. To reckon with the deep darkness in us, I am not so proud as to believe I am free of it, and to make something better out of it. Simply put, we believe in us, and we are likely to have that belief sorely tested in the days to come, as we all will. But that's the thing about having a minimum of faith in each other. It has to be tested if it is to mean anything at all. The biggest threat in humanity is humanity itself. Why is it in this chaotic times the humans go against each other but the animals group together? Where does that place people? We are lesser than the animals. Survival isn't to unite. It's to divide. At least that might be what we think and it's something I've walked away from seeing this thing being completely taken back by. Things that nobody talks about and leave the world behind. Nobody's paying attention to the animals. The animals are trying to warn us. They know something. They know something that we don't. It's like when dogs know storms are coming. Nobody even bothered to take a look at the deer and flamingos as a food supply. Maybe because the overall movie is just a few days after all the weirdness happening around, which is anywhere from Thanksgiving to Christmas on a weekend. First, the internet went out communication from mobile phones went down. And nobody fucking talks about getting hungry yet. Nobody even bothered to take a look at the deer and flamingos as a food supply. Maybe as a hunter, they'll see it differently and see the opportunity to hunt or trap some and have an endless supply of meat. As long as there is no zombie deer disease. Is it safe to eat flamingos? Flamingos are social birds that live in large flocks and are not typically consumed as a food source in many cultures, but some communities do eat them and some species are halal. Don't expect it to taste like chicken though. Apparently flamingo meat tastes more like duck, but with a slightly fishy taste. These are all good if you know how to gut a deer or prepare a bird for cooking. If not then you needed to watch how-to videos on YouTube. YouTube Learning University. Now thinking of the future, and thinking ahead. If there is no internet, the only option was to save and hoard videos on your phone as early as now and YouTube allows you to do that. But which one? Thousands and thousands of videos to sort out of any how-to topic. Which how-tos you keep? Not something you really think of when packing your backpack with camping and survival gear. I can't show you this conversation. Oh, this is not going to be for YouTube. Oh no? No, this is about us quitting on this thing. Okay.
The basic and essential of course, specialized, easy and intermediate. Maybe we can talk about this in another video. This really makes sense and very helpful especially to us with limited know-how on survival. The basics of hoarding how-to videos for doomsday prepping when shit hits the fan or whatever. Although not an animal, a non-mammal variant of the suicidal lemmings trope was shown in the movie, in order to block off roads, the presumed hackers behind the collapse remotely pilot self-driving cars to crash into each other and pile up, making roads near impossible to traverse. The Sanfords arrive in the middle of a pile up and have to essentially swim upstream while avoiding head-on collisions. The most drawn out, dull movie in a long time. Oil tanker runs aground, deers stare in a garden, plane crashes, dead bodies, flamingos in a swimming pool, obnoxious young black woman with a chip on her shoulder, kid watches episode of friends. The end. Thumb.